Since 2001, the Asia-Pacific region had the most natural disasters, along with the highest number of deaths than any other area in the world. On average, more than 200 million people suffer at the hand of natural disasters every year, making the annual death count total 70,000. In 2011, the Disasters Emergency Committee issued a warning. The world should expect three to five big urban disasters in the next 10 years. Leaving the inhabitants of Kathmandu and the surrounding area wondering, when will the next major earthquake strike? Expecting uh, these uh, mega disasters, uh, mega, uh, you know, scales earthquakes in Kathmandu. The statistics and, and the estimates are, uh, are, are pretty grim. Nepal, which is especially Kathmandu, uh, if something happened here, it's completely out of, uh, uh, like, it's cut, cut off from the world. Because of the understanding that a natural disaster is imminent and the necessity for a good emergency management plan, the Multinational Communications Interoperability Program brought together over 20 partner nation militaries, United Nations entities, non-governmental organizations, academia, and industry to address humanitarian assistance and disaster relief responses. With the uncertainty of a natural disaster in the Kathmandu region, the Nepalese Army decided to host Pacific Endeavor 2014. When nations join together for a humanitarian assistance or disaster relief operation, they know that their communication systems will work together and that the people know how, what the procedures are and how to do that. The chance of sharing your knowledge with the other participating nations is a once-of-a-lifetime opportunity. Having that relationship that we built under a training environment, both with the militaries as well as our, uh, our civilian counterparts, uh, we've seen that it, it accelerates the process of planning and establishment of comms, and it, it makes things much easier in, in the long run. It is important to understand the severity of natural disasters by teaching the participants to practice how they would react in a real-world situation. So a white cell was organized to create a scenario that would simulate an environment that would place them in a humanitarian assistance and disaster relief situation. They'll have to work together and, uh, you know, test the equipment and not only test the equipment but actually function you know, in an environment, uh, in an HADR, uh, in this case, uh, you know, it's an earthquake uh, in Nepal. The White Cell consisted of communication experts from many different areas to include the National Society for Earthquake Technology, Humanity Roads, and the World Food Program. With hopes of getting the participants to react as if this were a real-world disaster, these experts utilize their real-world experiences to unexpectedly add new twists to the scenario. Because they're going to get multiple requests from uh, you know, the government in Nepal to, to support the, you know, various sites and with various different types of equipment sets. So hopefully we'll try to mix it up and get them uh, be as challenging as we possibly can for them. On top of adjusting to the changing circumstances, they were also setting up three remote sites during the scenario. Teams were dispatched across Kathmandu to a forward operating base and Disaster Command Post 1 and 2. Though the importance of the scenario-based training is critical, it was also important to make sure these concepts were being understood through model-based training. The technical operational assessments developed the multinational capacity to deploy and manage data and transmission networks, use multiple channels of communication, and the implementation of multinational forces standard operating procedures. The Joint Interoperability Test Command assessed network installation procedures, reliability, security, and video voice service capability to support the exercise architecture. The security of communications networks during disasters is complex in multinational operations. Cyber Endeavor is an information sharing seminar covering topics relating to information assurance and computer network defense. The seminar consisted of academic instruction and hands-on exercises, as well as discussions on best practices in HADR operations based on lessons learned from participating MSIP nations and organizations. I hope we're building a, a culture of IA awareness 
so folks are, uh, you know, act in a, uh, a manner that's always protecting the network without even thinking about it. The management of limited radio frequencies is critical to HADR missions. Phoenix Endeavor covered topics related to the use and management of the electromagnetic spectrum. Participants were introduced to the Mercury software program. Mercury is a free online application for frequency management and assignment, which has been used in the past during HADR operations. It's got to do with radars, it's got to do with uh, telemetry, it's got to do with uh, the wireless phone that everybody's carrying in their pocket that is so dependent on. Uh, spectrum, without it, we're lost. Development of SATCOM terminals during disaster operations allows for increased bandwidth to support more users and data-intensive applications. The Global VSAT Forum conducted modules that allow participants to receive commercial SATCOM installation and operation certificates. This training helps them in not only having a stable link, but it they do an installation which is interference free. Each nation designated a representative to be their national delegation chief. Together, these members created the MSIP corporate board. They are responsible for identification of the technical goals and overseeing the execution of the workshop. The MSIP steering committee is made up of all the participating nation's senior communicators. During this annual session, they are briefed on the MSEP activities by the corporate board and discuss issues related to multinational communications. It gives a forum for us at the senior leadership as communicators to be able to talk to each other about the challenges and uh, solutions that we've come up with and really look towards how do we partner better and again, how do we build those relationships with, uh, with all of those senior communicators. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to do that. In addition to these informative modules, supporting organizations showcased a technology demonstration, which allowed participants to view applications and systems that could be used during an HADR response. How do we find new solutions, new innovative, uh, creative technologies that have um, lower uh, requirements for space, weight, power, uh, alternative power sources, and, um, and the kinds of things that are going to allow us to respond very quickly. We offer each organization the opportunity to come in and show emerging technologies. Uh, this year we'll have systems such as alternate power sources, unmanned aerial vehicles that can be used for uh, reconnaissance of a disaster area and provide communications for that, that emergent uh, comm element that's there. This event continues to grow with every passing year. As a result of growing participation, the amount of pre-planning involved has begun to increase. And this year is the largest Pacific Endeavor we've had over 12 year history. It's, it's pretty significant. We have uh, over 300 people, uh, 21 countries. Planning wasn't the only thing that exhibited an increase in size. But with such a large operation, it was no small task for the logistics cell to handle the amount of communication gear each country needed to accomplish the mission. It totaled up to $1.9 million worth of equipment that we were able to pull into Nepal. Um, working through customs and working through the Nepalese army to assist us with that. Moving massive amounts of equipment is one thing, but getting the personnel in position brings new challenges. One of the challenges that we did have here as a logistics cell was the small amount of support staff that we have here and having to move the amount of people to five different sites every single morning, every single afternoon, and every single evening. Typically, in a natural disaster, the military is not the first to respond. Members from non-governmental organizations and the international humanitarian community are the first to hit the ground. Building relationships with these first responders is critical to establish rapid communication. The United States military, we only respond to about 5 to 7 percent of the disasters worldwide. Our relationships that we build with the humanitarian communities, the non-government organizations, they're the ones on the ground first, so it's best that we have those relationships built beforehand. We understand what they're capable of, what they bring to the disaster relief, and how best we can plug into their relief efforts. Next year will be the beginning of a new five-year cycle. Five years is typically the industry standard for the lifespan of systems, so next year will be about using new emerging technologies. Pacific Endeavor 15 will be hosted in the Philippines, due to their history of natural disasters. They don't know when the next natural disaster will hit, 
but when it does, they'll be prepared thanks to their training. My top priority for, uh, for Pacific Endeavor is really all about building confidence that we know that it will work together and we build confidence in each other that we know how to operate with each other. Communication is the backbone of any disaster. Yeah? And if we have a communication right after disaster, that will help the outside the world to understand what had happened, what is need, what is the requirement, how to support. So that will be fantastic. So these things is fantastic going on. They have to remember that the procedures that they do day to day in order to fight, win the war, is no longer a war. The war we're facing is finding survivors, getting people to safety, bringing uh, equipment, bringing in food, bringing in water in distant places that we don't normally work. Today's technology is just amazing. We're, we're the most technologically empowered time of our lives and that's great, but it also means that we need to collaborate closely and work together for those solutions uh, so that we can respond faster.